in this part three of the Nina's interrogatories, those things that will not change, no matter who becomes president, those things mandated by the constitution that cause catastrophes we see all around us. In this part three, we'll be dealing with uh, the agitations across Nigeria. What is it in that constitution that is responsible for the agitations we see? Which will not go away no matter who becomes president until the source factor is addressed, turn off the tap. Second one, the decayed infrastructure we see, including seaports, airports, highways, railways. What's the reason they are in the state they are in now compared with Europe, compared with America, compared with Asia? What is it in that constitution that is responsible for what we see? Which no new president can adjust by himself, no matter how well intentioned. Turn off the tap, reverse the situation. Third thing is the question of rule of law and good governance. Those who go about talking about rule of law, under which constitution? The constitution mandates the laws we have. Some don't even know that the law, that constitution is by itself and the laws are, you know, products of a uh, constitution. And so, if you talk about rule of law, then I'll ask you which law? In the absence of a government that is a, not a, you know, a, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the absence of a constitution that a, does not a, allow anything to flow the way it should flow in a federation. So the rule of law is not possible. The rule of law is not possible under the 1999 constitution. Just like corrupt somebody coming to say he's going to fight corruption under that constitution, that person is a criminal. Anybody who tells you he wants to come to pursue rule of law under the 1999 constitution, tell that person that uh, Nina say he's a rogue because rule of law is ruled out from the apartheid constitution we have in place. It's already skewed. It already cuts you out. It took your assets without talking to you. It took the guns without talking to you. So it points, it's pointing guns at you, having taken your assets. And then it says, it, it, the rules, we're supposed to be a federation deciding together in symbiosis how we organize our society. You impose the rules that, that tie my hand to the back and you turn around to hold up that constitution as a basis of a rule of law. Shame on the lawyers in Nigeria that uh, canvass rule of law on that constitution of apartheid. Was there rule of law in South Africa for the blacks in the days of apartheid? That's what we're discussing. Go and return your certificates to the universities that, uh, that, uh, that uh, 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 gave you degrees in law. Go and, go and return the one the law school gave you, rule of law. So where are we going to get good governance if rule of law is not possible? And so let's come into it. The agitations, the number, the number one of what we listed, the agitations going on in the land. In course of my assignments in this project, whether it was in the LNC or the MNN that followed before it became Ninas when the peoples the constituent peoples of Nigeria came to join us. The agitations. We begin with the Niger Delta that was the first to become notorious. Resource control. What is their contention? I happen to have been eyeball to eyeball with uh, the very leaders of uh, those agitations across board. The one of Niger Delta, Niger, uh, 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 resource control. What are they asking? What's the question? The basic question they're asking is how did the oil and gas of Ijo land become the property of Sokoto people and Kano people and Jigawa people? How did the oil of Baesha become something that Jigawa people control? At what point did they submit their lands and their people into this union that will be managed in this form? So basically, these are constitutional grievances, these are constitutional questions. You cannot address that question with that constitution still standing because that constitution already took everything from them and put on exclusive list, oil and gas.
arms by which uh, they are being tormented. And so, no matter who becomes president, that question is not going to go away until it's addressed. In terms of calling the owners of the, of the lands, the sovereignties that are you know, uh, consolidated as Nigeria, calling the owners of those sovereignties to come to discuss. As it is with the uh, Niger Delta uh, uh, Resource uh, Control uh, Agitation, so it is with uh, the Biafra Agitation, the people of the East, uh, particularly the Igbo, uh, the, the, so many others are asking, on what terms, at what point did we submit our sovereignty into this union of debt? At what point did we agree that we should be, we should be, we should be tied up and, 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 and molested 24 hours, killed at will? as claimed in the preamble to that constitution. The ones who want the urban nation, who want autonomy, who want uh, restructuring and all kinds of things, they are saying the same thing. Let us go and sit down to work out the terms of our union. Until we go to, until, until we remove this fraud of 1999 that does now become basis of union, this imposition, this apartheid of a constitution until we do like South Africa did with apartheid constitution, set it aside, put it aside, go into a meeting to discuss what will be the replacement. And if we can't find common ground on account of clash of civilizations, if we can't find common ground, then the union stands dissolved. Those who did not know what uh, Nina's, uh, what LNC or Nina's was conversing all the while, you can now be informed that in targeting the life of that constitution, we wanted to end the union of death anchored on that constitution. The failed Lugardian experiment of 1914, the world caused Nigeria, is now framed and enabled by that constitution of 1999. There was the one of 79, there was the one of 63, there was the one of 60, but the one that is on the table now by which we are tied uh, hands to the back is uh, the 1999 edition of uh, the imposed unitary constitution. And so that is the source, that is the tap from which all the agitations in the land flows. They are basically asking who owns Papa's land? Go on YouTube right now, click the title who owns Papa's land so you can get more on this. But we are saying that constitution, as long as it's there, no matter who becomes president, these agitations will not go away. The, the beginning of the reversal, the beginning of the change in the situation for whether it's the Niger Delta agitation or the Biafra agitation or the Old Republic agitation, all the other agitations, the only thing that will bring relief, that will address the cost factor is that this constitution goes down. The fact that one new president uh, comes or the other goes does not uh, address it because uh, if the new president comes, is he going to now, he, he, with the arrival of Pito B as president or Tinubu as president, change the falsehood in the, pre on the, in the preamble to the constitution that we the people submitted our sovereignty into this union of death? No, it's not going to change. They can hang around there for eight years like Obasanjo John hung around like Jonathan uh, came in the time he came, he didn't change that. Uh, so those things that will not change, those things that will not change, no matter who becomes president, those are the issues we are taking up. So we've uh, dealt with uh, the agitations in the union uh, across board. We have the second item uh, in this part three, the decayed infrastructure, including seaports and airports and all of that. It is because of that exclusive list that the federal government is now the one to decide whether there will be airport in Enugu or whether there will be potholes in the wrong way or when they will be fixed or shut down the port of uh, Port Harcourt and uh, you know, uh, uh, tie everybody down to Lagos that has now become uh, unusable. It is because of that exclusive list that we have the decay in the infrastructure, the railways that shut down, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the seaports and airports and uh, the highways, look at the, look at the, look at the road that uh, goes from Enugu to Potakot. Look at the one that uh, goes from the east-west road. Go and see if it was the people of the territory that uh, will have charge and responsibility for fixing their roads. Those roads will not be like that. It is because 
These things are exclusively federal responsibility and therefore assets. The constitution, the constitution, you know, uh, 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 donates it to the to, to the illicit federal government that emerged since 1966. Nigeria ceased to be a federation at the point the constitutions, the five constitutions that define the federation, got toppled between 66 and 67, between those two coups. Particularly on the 27th of May in 1967, that Lieutenant Colonel Yakubu Gowon fractured the four regions into 12 states. That was the end of the federation of Nigeria because the constitutions of the four regions were then toppled. There was only now one uh, uh, government of the federation that uh, began to validate itself all the way to 1979 when they codified that unitarism. That's how we got to unitarism. What happened in January of 1966 uh, 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 was merely uh, you know, uh, some intervention by middle rank officers who were looking out for their country. It wasn't uh, something anybody did. Eronsi did not touch, Eronsi's decree number 34 did not touch the structure of the federation. For those of the, the, the people peddling all kinds of lies, we are talking about things that will not change. These things are, the, 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 we are, we are talking about how we got to where we have 68 items on the exclusive list. It was because we abandoned the federal basis of Nigeria to centralize everything in the unitarism we have. We then took all the economic assets and all the powers to work those assets and loaded into an exclusive list in the constitution that is now in the hands of an illicit federal government that is imposing itself on us. Of course, controlled by the caliphate. And so, nobody, uh, 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 those things will not change because... Uh, uh, Twitter will be or, or, or Tinobu become president. Those exclusive lists, the items in that exclusive list will remain there and the owners of those assets will continue to cry. The last item uh, there is uh, the rule of law and good governance. Like we already said, when everything is structured to be upside down, what rule of law are you talking about? Because, because the laws, the, the constitution is the mold. You know, you have a vehicle, you have an engine in that vehicle. There's a mold from where those parts of those engines are made before they are assembled. The constitution is the mold from which all your laws are made. So if the constitution already turns everything upside down, confiscates my, my sovereignty, pretending I donated, I brought it by myself, confiscating my economic assets, oil and gas here, port there, bitumen here, and limestone there, concessioning it to people, they, they, they already stole it, they hijacked it at gunpoint, and then uh, I'm supposed to now come and obey all the laws they make, even the representation in the National Assembly. How did we come to where I am now a permanent political minority? And then people gather in Abuja thinking they are there on my behalf. The ones from my part who go to, uh, 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 you know, uh, collect what they give to others, swearing to defend and uphold the constitution that, that enslaved me. I'm sorry for all of you because the day is near when that constitution will come crashing down. 24 years from 1999 is more than enough time for, for us to abandon the stupidity and obduracy of thinking that we are going to keep things the way they were imposed for all times. Particularly from the December 16, 2020 constitutional force majeure, by which we rolled out a plan, a framework, a process, a peaceful mechanism for addressing these issues that have been there more than 50 years. And people are dying in the numbers, they are dying. And then people go to wave a PDP and APC flag and Labour Party flag, subscribing all to that constitution that, are respons that is responsible for these uh, calamities we are discussing. That we can't have rule of law, we can't have you know, any end, any solution or resolution of agitations, we can't have anything better in the infrastructure uh, that we have seen. Because no investor in his right mind will come to, to put uh, other people say uh, five or ten billion dollars into a disputed project like Nigeria at this time. Those who go around the uh, shopping, we hear all kinds of characters uh, now talking about uh, the foreign uh, governments that are now interested in Nigeria because uh, somebody uh, they know his face has become a uh, president. They are lying to you. Those people you are talking about, whether it is a uh, uh, Kellogg that will build gas pipeline for you. Or, or, or General Electric that will come and do electricity for you, or even uh, the German, uh, what do they call uh, 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 the one that was going to do our electricity uh, uh, from Germany. These are all 
you know, folk tales, that, 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 the hogwash. Those people are talking to us. We, we knew them before you came to government. We were in the industry, we were in the oil industry, and we are dealt with them. They still talk to us. You talk about foreign investments that will come, direct, uh, 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 foreign uh, 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 direct investment. Nobody, nobody is coming. Because before you take a decision to move five or $10 billion, there must be final investment uh, decision. FDI, foreign direct investment, is predicated upon the final investment decision. Everybody can sign MOU with you. Uh, with you. The people who are going about signing MOU of how everybody will come and invest, they will sign MOU with you. But they're going to do their due diligence. And it is in course of that due diligence they're going to be asking about rule of law in your country. They're going to be asking about the judicial system in your country. They're going to be asking about what governs contract. If it goes bad, what happens? What well, they're going to be asking about security. They're, they're not going to send their own people to come and die here because people are beheading people. These are the things that will that will, that will bring them to the point where they take the final investment decision that will then become basis of deploying the uh, foreign direct investment. No foreign direct investment is coming. Nigeria is a disputed project, and uh, until, that pro until that dispute is resolved, you are wasting your time talking about uh, people who come in the absence of rule of law, in the absence of infrastructure, in the absence of uh, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, resolution of uh, all these kind of, of agitations that become bloodshed around their facilities. I think we we'll stop here.